Hi everyone. I hope you don't mind that I jumped into it today. I wanted to ask you a few questions about the last case. I'm betting that most, if not all of you, agreed with Mill on case number two, pulling the lever to you know kill the one and save the five. But I'd also be willing to bet that most of you disagreed with Mill about case number three, where you mess with the man's machine and arrange for his organs to be donated to five others. Okay, so here's the question. If you agreed with Mill on case two, but not on case three, what's the difference? Now, maybe you think that the people in the hospital are going to get an organ just in time. But if you think that, you are deviating from the case. You're trying to change the case so you can avoid the problem. I mean, if we're going to say that, you might as well say that I could just jump in front of the train and stop it with my bare hands. Maybe you want to say that there's something about messing with the machines that's directly killing the person. Whereas with the lever, you're not directly killing the person. Well, no, make no mistake. When you uh, mess with somebody's machines and to cause their death, yes, you're directly killing the person. Maybe not as direct as, you know, <clears throat> here's a gruesome thought, wrapping your fingers around their throat. But uh, the outcome is the same with the uh, lever, right? You're using equipment to kill somebody else. This is not a relevant difference. Maybe you think in case three, it's murder since it's undeserved death. Well, I got news for you. In case two, it's also murder if what murder is, is an undeserved death. After all, you thought it was wrong to pull the lever in case one. That's killing somebody who doesn't deserve it. And that's murder. It doesn't matter whether there are five people laying on the other track or not. In case two, case three, and case one, it's murder. Believe it or not, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I'm not even trying to tell you that you can't be a consequentialist. What I am saying is this. If you're going to follow Mill here and be a consequentialist in case two, well, consistency demands that you follow Mill in case three as well. If you're going to pull the lever and kill the person on the, on the train track in case two, consistency demands that you also end that person's life in the hospital. If you're going to follow somebody like Locke in case three and say that you can't violate that person's rights in the hospital, that means that you can't violate that person's rights on the train track either. I wouldn't turn to Aristotle here either. I'm not sure what the virtuous person would do in this situation. That's kind of a weakness of virtue ethics. Maybe you're going to say that it just doesn't feel right to end the person's life in the hospital. Okay, well, if that's going to justify your action, I think you're back to Hume. And nobody in the class really liked that consequence. Well, at this point, you're probably pretty frustrated. I understand. But remember, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. I'm not going to tell you which theory to follow. I'm only going to tell you the price, and every belief has a price.